thanks for tuning in. This is the Life of Miner, and let's check out week 81 of my mining payouts. Okay, so at the beginning of these payout videos, let's go over the date and time when you took these payouts. We took these payouts on November 1st on 2020, about 3.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So like previous weeks, I've been mining Ethereum, and I do average around 1.2 giga hashes mining Ethereum. I've been also mining green coin, and I do average around 46 grass per second. And last but not least, I've been mining Monero on my CPU, and I do average around 9 kilo hashes. So pulling up my Excel, and if you want to check out what I mined, I did mine around 0 0.53 Ethereum, equaling around $206.37, about 218.3 green coin, equaling around $55.55, and about 0 0.03 Monero, equaling around $3.74. So if I did sell everything today, I would have made $265.62. Okay, so now pulling up my electricity bill, I do pay about 10 cents per kilowatt hours. So for this month, my electricity bill did come out to be $458. Okay, so now pulling back up my Excel, and if I did sell weekly, I would have made $1,099.30. My first mining farm, the electricity bill came out to be that $458. My second mining farm is a set fee of $100. So my total electricity cost came out to be $558. So my total net profit for this month came out to be $541.30. And then if you wanted to check out my YouTube profits, I did make about $553.83 for the month of October. And now checking out my GPU count, I do have a total of 75 GPUs and one CPU. My GPUs are mining Ethereum and Greencoin, and my CPU is mining Monero, and I do have two mining farms. Okay, so for this week's fun clip, this is a bullish news clip on Bitcoin, and I did add a bonus clip at the end. So let's check this out. Welcome back. We've got a Bitcoin alert. The cryptocurrency is surging to its highest level in nearly three years. It is now up in nine of the past 11 days. Let's bring in Michael Sonnenschein. He's the managing director of Grayscale Investments, largest asset manager in the digital currency space. Michael, great to speak with you. Same here. Thanks for having me. Um, BTC is also up 25 percent this month alone. And I'm wondering, what do you think is a primary driver of this of this uh, rise, especially because, I mean, we're just about a week away from the election. I mean, does that have uh, something to do with this? I think what we're seeing is that Bitcoin has really solidified its role as digital gold in investor portfolios. Investors are telling us that Bitcoin warrants a place in their portfolios because they're living in a world characterized by digital exchanges and not physical ones. And it's not just investors telling this, we're seeing the same kind of reports of research coming out from major banks like JP Morgan. And what's interesting is that Bitcoin continues to get challenged. And each time it does, it comes out stronger. And honestly, 2020 has been no exception to that rule. This year, we saw this past spring, one day where Bitcoin drew down almost 50% in a single day. And now Bitcoin's returned to almost 90% year to date, which is you know broadly outperforming the equity markets and a lot of other asset classes. So investors really just can't ignore it anymore. How excited were you when Paul Tudor Jones is on Squawk Box and he talked <laughs> up Bitcoin? I mean, were, were you high-fiving <laughs> your partners over at Grayscale? <laughs> There have been a lot of good tailwinds. We've seen PayPal meaningfully enter the space, public companies like Square and MicroStrategy adding Bitcoin to their balance sheets. And yes, we're certainly seeing it at grayscale. We've brought in over two and a half billion dollars in new investor money this year, which is more than double our cumulative inflows from 2013 all the way through last year. So we're seeing growth on all fronts. So, so it's Steve Grasso. So when you just describe the volatility that's within Bitcoin, that's what makes me want to stay away from it. So when do you start to uh, feel as if you'll, you'll have a more substantive, sturdy market with a retail audience and an institutional base that will feel comfortable holding it? I've seen the headlines from PayPal, from Square, from Fidelity with the new fund. When do you start to think that volatility where if I bought it today, I don't have to worry about losing 50% tomorrow, will start to solidify a little bit to the upside. I think we're actually seeing already quite a bit of that. You know, what's been interesting over the last year or so is really the, the, the development of a two-sided market, borrowing and lending, derivatives. I think that's really helped to decrease a lot of the volatility that we're seeing in Bitcoin. But I'd also say most of the investors that are coming to Grayscale these days are really looking at their allocations over a medium to longer term time horizon. And so when we do have moments of volatility, like that 50% drawdown day, we had investors looking to opportunistically add to their positions, not running scared because Bitcoin had a, you know, a drawback like it's had before. 
Michael, always get to great, your, uh, great to get your thoughts. We appreciate it. Thank you. Michael Sonnenschein of, of Grayscale. Um, Pete Najarian, how are you feeling about Bitcoin as a, a, whole, a placeholder in your portfolio today versus, say, two years ago? Yeah, I think people have gotten a lot more comfortable with it, Mel, than they, they were a couple of years ago. I think every year that goes by, people find a little bit more comfort. Obviously, the Jamie Diamonds of the world and so many others that weren't involved initially have start, sort of started to get involved a little bit. And so I think going forward, yeah, this is going to be something much bigger. I'm getting a little bit more into it myself. My brother John's been into it for multiple years, but I think this is something that we're all adapting to slowly, but we are adapting to it. And some of us probably have gotten there too slowly. And I'm in, I'm in that camp because this is, a, uh, this is a category that's absolutely been on fire. I know it's volatile, but it certainly is a category that's gone uh, just absolutely parabolic versus the markets. Tim, quick thought here. I think the, the next part of this trade is to go into the broader, you know, digital currency markets. And again, you know, we, we've seen this before and, you know, rally in Bitcoin is pulling uh, broader currencies. I think you just have to be very careful. But um, the legitimacy is there. I don't I don't think there's a question about that. I think it's really uh, people need to do their work on outside of Bitcoin where there's opportunity. Because I think there are many. Hope you prepared yourself. Are those playing cards? Yes, these are playing cards. And whatever number I draw determines how many bones will break on your body. Wait, what? They break bones? Ah, fuck! Ah, my finger, my, my arm! What the fuck? Ah, Count yourself ah, lucky it was only a two. Ah, Let's see what the deck has for you next. Where did you get that power? I hope you guys are ready. Huh? What? Wait, what, what is that? What does that do? I actually have no clue myself. But if I point it at you, I can send you to a different dimension. It sends people to different dimensions? Why? Why? What is that? What? I don't even know what that is. Allow me to show you. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, well, why, why I just got more shorts? Why y'all got that? That's enough. Your weakness disgusts me. Oh no, oh no, what he got, what he got? Oh, he got a sword, that's, that's, that's kind of normal. Okay, we good, we good. Wait, this isn't the right weapon. What? A piece of paper? <laughs> yes, a piece of paper. Oh my God, oh, what, what does it do? Don't even tell me what it, it destroyed, the, does it feel or something? What does it do? <laughs> the field? That's cute. One fold from this paper will destroy the entire Earth. The Earth? Wait, it destroys the Earth? Hey, hey, hold on. Hey, hey, I'm out. I'm out. I swear to God, I'm out. Hey, this has nothing to do with me no more. I'm just a martial artist. That, that's your person. That's who you're fighting right there. Dimensions and versus Earth. Hey, please, please leave, leave me out of this, okay? I'm just a martial artist. I'm telling you, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be fighting niggas like, I don't know, Bruce Lee or something. But it's not here. This is not the people I'm supposed to be fighting, all right? Please. Please, I already got my arm broke. I'm just gonna leave now. Look, I lost, I'm, I'm out. Come on, how I'm gonna fight? I'm a martial arts, my arm broke. I'm out. All right, so thanks for checking out this week's mining payout. Stay tuned for next week's as well. And shout out to this week's random comment winner. And if you do want to be featured, just write a comment below. And if you do want to catch these payouts live, I do stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the life of miner every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you enjoyed it. Sub your side to see what's next. But of course, thanks for watching and always happy mining. Thanks for watching the life of a miner. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You don't want me to get angry and turn Super Saiyan, so make sure you subscribe to The Life of a Miner. I'm also the narrator, next time on The Life of a Miner.